Hi everybody, my name is Miss Nickerson and today I'm going to show you how to use Flip in your classroom. So Flip is a very exciting tool. It is formally called Flipgrid. Now it's just been shortened to Flip. Flip is a tool that is amazing for blended learning, differentiation, small group, whole group, one-on-one, -on -one, however you want to use it. It's a great tool. So I used to use this in the classroom in my small groups and what I would do is I would record myself giving a mini lesson and have students create their own videos back. So I'm going to give you a little um, taste of what that looks like and how to create your own flip video. So I'm going to log in with my Google credentials and we'll get started. So I'm just going to click continue with Google. So now that I'm actually in Flip, I'm going to show you the difference between a group and a topic. So a group, I'm going to compare it to Google Classroom um, to kind of scaffold. So groups are equivalent to Google Classroom classrooms that you have. So these are your different classrooms that you have. So maybe you are a middle school teacher and you're going to say math period one, math period three, that's how you could make these different um, groups. If you're an elementary teacher, maybe it's just 2022-2023 school year. Um, that's how I used to do it in the classroom. And then topics are like your assignments in Google Classroom. So this is the actual assignment that students are completing. So within my group, I'm going to create a new group. I'm going to create a new group for the classroom that I'm currently working with. So I'm going to select that I'm in a classroom and I'm going to write I'm going to call this classroom Miss Nickerson Coding. So this is for my classroom that I'm in right now that I'm currently coming in and teaching students how to code. So then you can edit your theme to be whatever you want. I'm going to make it a nature one, I think. You can make it match your theme if you want. So I could have found a coding picture, but um, my students know that I really like to be outside, so I'm going to personalize it a little bit. What I like to do when creating a flip um, group is just importing a Google Classroom so that they're all already in there. So I'm going to add my Google Classroom of Kids to this flip. So now that I'm signed in, I'm going to pick the class. And create the group. So now I can either copy and paste this link on my Google Classroom, I could push it out through Lightspeed, however I want students to get this link. So Flip will automatically create a topic for you and it just says general right now. So it's giving you a template that you can work with if you want to here. I'm going to start from scratch and show you how to create your own. So I'm going to click plus topic and this topic is going to be on Ozobots. Ozobots. So what I'm going to do is allow students to watch a video of me giving instructions. So I'm basically cloning myself within the classroom for students to get direction so that they can just be on flip and see me giving instruction while I can be off differentiating for my other students who may need one-on-one -on -one or small group help. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to include topic media. So you could have an image, a, a GIF, you could upload your own video, you could connect a YouTube video. So if you were learning multiplication, you could find a YouTube video on multiplication and then have students create their own video responding to it. Um, you could also add a different integration. What I'm going to do today 
is I'm gonna record a video of myself giving directions so that way I'm cloning myself in the classroom, really taking advantage of blended learning so that I can go help other students who are gonna need more support. So I'm going to click record video. And here I am, little camera reception for us. So I'm gonna record a video for my students to watch when they are in Flip. So before I start my video, I want you to notice all the tools on the side here. We have a text tool, we have a drawing tool, we have a sticker tool where students can include different GIFs, um, emojis, things like that. Um, we also have the GIF tool. I know that Giphy is blocked for students in my district though, so I'm not going to include that. Um, I can put a frame around myself. And I also can have a board, so if I want to be writing notes while I'm talking, I can do that as well as inserting a photo if I want to. So what I'm actually gonna do is I'm gonna include a board because I want to write something out for my students. And then I'm going to include text. So I'm gonna include this typewriter font and I'm gonna say area is length times width. I'm teaching a unit on area and perimeter, so I really wanna make sure that my students know this. So I'm going to put it over here, and then I'm going to include another text that talks about perimeter. So perimeter, add side length. And then I'm going to go ahead and move this over here too. And make it a little bit smaller. And make sure that my kids really understand that concept. And I'm gonna leave a little bit of room because I'm actually going to draw for them. So now I'm gonna start recording my video. Hey everybody, so ever since I've been coming into your classroom, we have really been focusing on area and perimeter. So today is the day that you get to show me your thinking. So remember with area, area is length times width. And with perimeter, you add all of the side lengths. So we've been working with rectangles and today you are going to get graph paper and you are going to create your own pathway coded for your own Ozobot. So what I expect you to do is I want you to create a rectangle with any dimensions and you're going to show me how you find the area and how you find the perimeter. So if I created a rectangle that is two units by five units, then I want you to show me the math on how you are gonna find the area. So you would show me two units times five units is gonna give me 10 square units. You could also draw out for me, like we learned in our lesson, the square units that's gonna get you those 10 units. For perimeter, you're gonna show me how you add all of those side lengths to find the perimeter of your shape. Once you are all done here, I want you to film yourself finding the area, finding the perimeter, and showing your Ozobot make a path around the perimeter of your rectangle with at least three different codes. And I want you to explain to me what those codes were. I also want you to show me if your Ozobot was able to successfully do that. So were there any bugs in your algorithm or were you able to do that successfully? So the expectation for this flip grid is that you're going to find the area, the perimeter, and explain your thinking, and then show me your Ozobot successfully making it around the perimeter. If it is not successful, maybe talk about potential bugs for the algorithm that you created. So all of you go ahead and create your own flip here with your Ozobot. And I can't wait to see them all, and I will leave a comment on all of your videos. So now that my video is done, I'm going to go ahead and click on this next button. Hey everybody, so ever since I've been coming into your classroom, we have really been focusing so, on area and perimeter. 
if I wanted to add anything, like add music in the background, add another clip here at the end, or I could split um, different clips. So if I wanted to edit something out, I could do all of that here in the editor. But I think that my video is pretty good to go, so I'm just gonna click next. But I'm okay with that cover photo, so I'm going to keep it and just click and click upload. So now my video is ready to go, and if I wanted to include any written directions here, I could. If I wanted to include a link, maybe a link to a YouTube channel that gives a refresher on area and perimeter, or a link to how to use the Ozobots in case they are having issues, they can try to problem solve on their own. Um, so the link is really important. I can also give them a timeline, so I'm going to give them a minute and 30 seconds to share. I don't want to give them the full 10 minutes. If you think about this, you as the teacher are going to have to go back and watch these videos. So keep in mind that if you have a class of 27 students all giving you a 10 minute video, that's going to be 270 minutes that you are watching your students. So keep that in mind as you pick a recording time. Also, students tend to keep talking if you give them more time. So I try to limit them so that they give me the most important details in a minute and a half. If I had a PDF of directions or if I had pictures of something that I wanted to show them, I could also add those attachments here. Since I gave verbal directions in this video, I'm not gonna include that much in my description, but if I did want to include key details here, I can share that right here. So maybe I'm gonna say, I said share your Ozobot pathway, and then I'm gonna say, remember to state the area perimeter and your successful pathway. And I really want students to remember to include that in their video, so I'm gonna bold that for them. Then I would just click post topic. So I can copy this link and paste it on my Google Classroom. I could just click on my Google Classroom here, or I could also copy the link, send it out through Lightspeed Classroom, or I could copy the link and put it on Google Classroom myself. I could put it on any other LMS that I'm using. However, I want this to get out to students. Students would also know that if they go to Flip, then they can just find this topic waiting for them as well. So now they can click on this, watch me giving directions, see my directions here as well, and then they can include their own videos. So they're gonna include a video response to me stating their area perimeter and Ozobot path, and then they can comment on other students' videos as well, and so they can go back and forth. If I wanted to, I could have included a component where I said comment on at least one other person's video. This class that I'm working with happens to be a very small group, so I didn't include that they had to do that. I just really want them to focus on their learning and talking about their learning but I have done that in the past where I say comment on two other people's Flipgrid videos, and it's really powerful to get your kids communicating and talking and collaborating. So that is how to create your own Flip video, and I'm so excited for you all to use that. I can't wait to hear about what your students are creating.